let's get into the word. Woo, I'm going to preach that word right there, though, man. Faith from the position of victory. I got a new revelation. I done had a revival. <laughs> Come on down. I done had a revival. You hear me? Everybody wait, waiting for these big old meetings to have revival. And the word of God is revival. That is powerful. Okay, so let's get into this. We're in part four of an amazing teaching. Got a lot I'm going to dump on you today. Got a whole bunch of scripture I'm going to give to you because we at church. And when we're at church, we're supposed to be in the word. Unfortunately, a lot of people going to church and they're not hearing the word, <laughs> not being taught the word. And so what we want to do is we want, I, want, I, I got to do what I've been called. I'm hired by the king, not Burger King, so I can't have it my way. And I'm supposed to be teaching from this book of the law. Amen? And so uh, our theme, we're in part four again of Blurred Lines. Our themes is thoughts, concepts, and reasonings <clears throat> that contradict God's word. Um, um, uh, uh, we're in false belief number four. And so just, just to say this, we understood, we've understood or we brought to an understanding is that Satan wants to blur the lines of demarcation uh, through false beliefs. You got it? And, and, and what we're doing, what my, my attempt in this teaching is to expose him. Amen. We want to expose him. The Bible says, the, uh, 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 Jesus said he made a show of them. Oh, Paul, speaking of Jesus, said he made a show of them of him openly triumphing over him in them. But he nailed all that stuff to, to the cross, all these principalities and powers. Now, you know, and, and we, I understood in context that's talking about man with his false teachings, but that man is being puppeteered by Satan. Amen. And, and so we want to deal with these false beliefs. And so we're in James chapter 4, verse 7. Don't turn there. This is just a little review. Uh, teaches us that we're supposed to submit to God and we're supposed to resist the devil and he's supposed to flee. But if the lines of demarcations are blurred, then we don't know what to submit to. And we could possibly be submitting to the devil and resisting God and don't know it. And so today is false belief number four, and it is the failure of the believer to receive healing, listen, is proof that God was not willing to heal in that case. Again, the failure of the believer to receive healing is proof that God was not willing to heal in that case. Now, I want you to lean in today and listen intently because I'm trying to build your faith because at some point in life, all of us are going to be faced with the death of someone. And, and it will be our faith, our understanding of death and of, of, of as much as we possibly can because we know in part, we hear in part, but we definitely need to know what's false. Uh, even if we don't have full truth, at least we know that that's false and I don't have to sit my, I cannot afford to sit my faith on that. Are you listening to me? And so we need to build faith because I am just convinced, excuse me, I am convinced that That, that we have as Christians, uh, the Bible, Paul says uh, that we are not supposed to sorrow as them that have no hope. And so I believe that as Christians, uh, some of our funerals are, are filled. Now, now, now get, get, listen to Pastor very carefully. Listen to Pastor very carefully. I'm not saying that there would not be mourning and, and, and sorrow would not be, uh, uh, um, would, would not be heard or, or demonstrated in funerals. That's not what I'm saying. But I am, all, I am at the same time convinced that our funerals, our Christian funerals, are filled with too much sorrow and too much mourning and not enough praise. Because the Bible says we're not supposed to sorrow as others. I ain't saying don't cry when mama, grandma, I'm a friend. That's not what I'm saying. See, you need to listen. Listen intently to what I'm saying. I need your hearing, your full hearing, because if you don't hear, then Satan going to blur the line because the Bible says he come immediately to steal the word. So I'm not telling you that you don't cry. I'm not telling I remember uh, years ago I did a, uh, a funeral for one of our members' uh, uh, mother. She doesn't go here, but she frequents here a lot. Husband passed and wanted me to come and, and do the prayer at the funeral and, and so uh husband body is up here not husband husband body is up here and and they had the uh the anybody want to come up for the last view and she walks up there she cried at first first time second time around she she was up there she laid her hand on the casket and she started doing like this man she still and then she just broke out pray and the people tried to come sit her down and, and I said, well, what a shame. She's giving God praise. Now, while she was mourning, they was patting on her back. But now she's praising God for the life that she was able to experience. And the man that God longed to her, she's now giving God praise, and they want to sit her down. But see, that's the church. That's the church. That's the church. That's the church for you. Now, 
Let's talk about this. Because the failure of the believer to receive healing is proof that God was not willing to heal in that case as a blurred line. And we need to establish the line of demarcation. So we'll be covering two areas today. Uh, and I can already tell I'm going to go over my time a little bit. I'm going to move, but I'm going to go over my time a little bit. We're, we're going to talk about human experience or Jesus. Human experience or Jesus. We got a lot of human experience in the church. Matter of fact, the church, we like more experience than we like words. You know, people say, if you ain't been through nothing, you can't tell me. That, that is so foolish. That, it, that, that then totally kicks out word of wisdom. That kicks out word of knowledge. So what are you saying? I have to have smoke crack myself to know that you don't need to be on crack? And then we just adopt that statement. If you ain't been through nothing, you, ain't, you can't tell me nothing. And so what are you saying? Does that mean that every woman got to be a single mother in order to know you don't want to be a single mother? So we just kick being a virgin until you get married out the door. Matter of fact, to the degree that you will have women that will tell you, I don't want a man if he's not experienced. So what you just said is, you want a man that has previous sleeping around. Uh, what's my word? Previous sleeping around. Uh, no, no, no. What's, uh, what's Jada Pickens' word? Uh, inter, uh, what, entanglements. That, that I'm, uh, no, no, I want you to listen to you because you say it. Stop laughing. Listen at your cuckoo self. You don't want a man. So you prefer a man who has been in entanglements because you believe that his experience with those make it better with you, but he ain't never been with you, so he don't know what you like. He just know what he experienced with them. See, that's us. That's the church. But see, that, that's that experience theology that we love. You should want a man who's a virgin so he, you would be the first thing he's ever had. And then he would not have to compare you to his entanglements. Because watch this. You may not match up to his entanglements. To a crazy self. So with you being the only thing, maybe he just may get hooked on you. Or he may not say, you know, you don't fit her because she. Oh, that ain't, even, that ain't what I'm supposed to be on. 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 I'm supposed to be on something, but I'm just trying to show you how, how we sound as the church. <laughs> how we sound as the church. We just so crazy. We so crazy. God up there like, Lord, my people, my people, my people, my people. It says resist. That word resist means to withstand the action of. Say so we're supposed to resist the devil, Marlon. We're supposed to withstand the action or the effect of, we're supposed to withstand it. Now, I'm nosy. That word withstand stuck out to me. And watch this. The word withstand means to remain undamaged or unaffected by. Did y'all hear that? Wait a minute. The Bible says we're supposed to resist the devil. Come on, say resist him. The word resist means we're supposed to withstand the action or effect of. The word will stand because we've resisted him, faith, Ruth, good to see you back. We now remain undamaged and unaffected by. <laughs> so why are we seeing the damages of Satan? Because we don't resist him. You know why we don't resist him? Because we don't know the lines of demarcation. Now, let's get into it. Human experience or Jesus, who should we believe? Who should we believe, human experience or Jesus? Got a couple of questions I want to ask you. Listen carefully, a couple of questions. How many of you, it's a rhetorical question. You don't have to raise your hand. Just want you to answer inside, inside, inside voice, like we tell <laughs> inside self. <laughs> How many of you have received, listen carefully, rhetorical question. Every time you say that, somebody going to lift their hands. Though You already know it, right? How many, <laughs> How many of you have received a supernatural healing or know of someone who was healed by the power of God. See, I said, put a hand. I told you, one hand. It was all every time. <laughs> Just think about that. Right? Okay, okay, good. Here's another question. How many of you fail to receive your healing after prayer? Listen. And what were your thoughts when you didn't receive it? You didn't get healed. You prayed. You know somebody that prayed. Prayer group got together didn't get healed, what were your thoughts? Just think. My last question. How, how many of you 
know of someone who was a Christian and you think that they were a good person, but he or she did not receive their healing and or maybe even died. Listen carefully. Did not receiving or dying shake your confidence or create doubt in your mind concerning God's ability and willingness to heal? I mean, they went to church, they prayed, good person, got sick, you prayed, they prayed, but they died. They're all, they're all, I, I, I would, I would, I'm, even, I'm willing to stick my head out on the limb and say there are millions of people who are no longer Christians or claim Christianity on a now these, quote, universal people because somebody died and didn't get healed that they prayed for, and now they're shaking their confidence, their trust in God is now shaken because the person did not get healed. Now listen at this. Philippians chapter 2, verse 26 and 30 says, For he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because ye had heard that he had been sick. Look at verse 30. Because of the work of Christ, he was nigh unto death. Oh, oh, look at these next three words. Read that. Not regarding. I want you to stay right there. I want you to get that now. This person worked in the ministry. And the Bible says they were sick, but the Bible tells us why. Not regarding his life. See, I, I, I even tell, I tell our staff, I tell those of you that are here, good place for a stick up. Don't think that coming to church ushering and singing and serving should take the place of your, real, or even working at the church takes the place of your relationship with God. That is not the substitute. Oh, I serve so that, you know, I spend time with God because I usher every Sunday. No, 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 that's not time spent with God. That's serving in the house of the Lord. So he, evidently this person is doing the work of the ministry and in their mind, I shouldn't get sick. Shouldn't nothing happen to me because I'm doing the Lord's work. But the Bible says they were sick unto death. But they weren't sick because they were doing the good work of the Lord. They were sick because they were trying to plant a different seed, hoping that it would produce a different harvest. They were, not, they were doing ministry, hoping that doing ministry would keep them healed. And, God, and the scripture is saying doing ministry, right, does not supplicate for you having responsibility over your body. But that's what we think. She prayed. She, she, led, she led the prayer ministry. She, how, Lord? How, Lord? And I don't know if I, because he might not heal me. But what are she regarding their life? Are y'all listening? This is good already. Because that's our, that, that will be our at-home conversations. How could, how could you do it? How, 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 Lord, how could? They, they were good. They should have, not them. And you're judging it off of your experience with them that they were in church and they were, you saw them praying. You know they were giving and you didn't see any of their experiences. So how did they die and how did they live? But you don't know if the one living was regarding his life and the one that died was it. Let me deal with some human experiences. Human experiences can be a roadblock to faith and healing if you allow it to. Elisha. Elisha died sick. We're talking about a man. He's the protege of Elijah. So he's walking in a double portion of the anointing. He did far greater healings. He's operating almost every gift of the spirit, but he died sick. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in 2 Kings 13, Verse 14a, it says, Elijah was falling sick of his sickness, whereof he died. Man of God, great man of God, died sick. Uh, Trophimus, another person was sick, and the Bible says Paul didn't heal him. Paul did not heal him. We're talking about human experience now. So if you knew Elijah was this great man of God, great prophet, healing everybody else, raised people from the dead, but he died. 
Well, then what's going to be your thought about God if he die? Well, shoo. He doing all that. He talking to God. He face to face with God. He done raised folk from the dead. Surely, ain't, ain't no way in the world I got a chance if he died. Oh, so his human experience determines who God is. So God is now who he is based on his experience with other people and the greatness of their level of accomplishments in God. Now that determines who God is. He is not God all by himself. He's God based on his experience with other people whom you deem to be great. Trophimus, Paul didn't heal him. It says, Erecta stayed at Corinth in 2 Timothy 4 and 20. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And I left Trophimus sick in Miletus. Paul said, I left him sick. Why you ain't healing, Paul? Well, we don't know why, Paul. The Bible didn't tell us that. The Bible just tells us Paul left him where he was and he was sick. I didn't want him traveling with me. I needed the social distance. We got this young preacher by the name of Timothy, another human experience. He's, a young, he's noted to be the youngest preacher in the Bible with one of the biggest churches. Paul writes a letter to him and sends him warning, says don't, don't, don't lay hands suddenly on no man. What that? Now, now, y'all, ooh, okay, see, huh, sometimes stuff hit me and I had to go and teach it out the way. Not laying hands on no man don't mean that somebody can lay hands on you and put a demon in you. Like, Like, that is like no God at all. That somebody could just put hand. I don't want them touching me. A demon might get up in me. What, what, what was telling Timothy because Timothy needed help. He was saying, look, man, I know those are your boys and they're helping you out, but don't put hands on them and give them authority because they're not mature enough for it. He said, so don't lay hands on them and put them in places in the church just because they're your homeboys. Like I tell people, I tell all my family members that that's going to join this church, I got, to, I got to meet with them. I got to talk with them before they join. I got to let them know, this ain't, you know this ain't no family church. You do know that, right? There's only one first family in this, and that's me and Pastor M. The moment you come through those doors, my, I told my mama that. The moment you come through those doors, you are my mama naturally, but I be the pastor. And if you can't stand my correcting, if I'm just your uncle, I mean your nephew, if I'm just your cousin, if I'm just your son, if I'm just your grandson, it's probably best that you don't join this church because I don't let family off. Thank God you're my cousin, but don't be walking around here, you know, name dropping. You know I'm Pastor Cut. You look back at them and tell them, Pastor said from the pulpit, that means absolutely nothing. Because when we step in these walls, it's about Jesus. And if I need to sit you down, family member, I'm going to sit your butt down too. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because I got quite a few family members here at this church. So I have to let them know that, make sure they understand it. Because they can't come in. We, we, we don't, we don't, no, no. Paul, matter of fact, Jesus, they say, Jesus, there go your mama and your brother. He say, who is my family? <laughs> he said, when it come down to this kingdom thing, she just gave birth to me, baby. <laughs> Who is my family? Here go my folk right here. So I take the Jesus approach. Uh, Timothy, listen carefully, listen carefully. Timothy was instructed to use some wine as medicine for his ongoing stomach problems. This young preacher was, I believe he was having stomach ulcers from all the pressure of being a young preacher and the folks trying to run him because he's young. And so Paul said, uh, for that sickness that's happening in your body, you drink a little wine, it'll be good. It's a different wine than it was back then. See, we, get, we drink now to get drunk. Wine was back then for, mo, mo, well, I mean, they got drunk off of it too, you know, yeah. But they also used wine back then for medicinal purposes. And so he was telling him for this sickness, he said, you need to, put a, you need to drink a little wine for this ongoing. So he, here it is, 1 Timothy 5, 23, for those of you who need the scripture. He says, drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine often infirmities. You see it there? 
And so please don't be coming up to me telling my pastor, I, uh, uh, when you read that scripture today, I just got a, a I had a revival. And, <laughs> and uh, I'm having this often infirmity. Because <laughs> some of y'all ladies be having infirmity parties. You know, y'all be having them wine, them infirmity parties. <laughs> don't you use that scripture for that. The Lord rebuke you. Here's a point. Here's a point. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. Believers have to guard their hearts and minds from bringing God and his word down to the level of human experience. We gotta, you got to guard your heart and guard your mind from bringing God down to the level of your human experience. Listen, nowhere in scripture are we told to follow Elijah. Nowhere in scripture are we told to follow Trophimus. Nowhere in scripture are we told to follow Timothy. No way in Scripture. As a matter of fact, Romans chapter 3, verse 4, the latter part of the Scripture says, Let God be true, and every man a liar. See, one of the issues, one of the things that chaps my hide about us is that most of us don't know the Word. I got sons and daughters in here who have podcasts, and I, I, you know, for them that entrust me, I watch them, and if I got something to say, I hope they trust me that I'm going to say it. But I'm thankful that they, they go down, they say, and the Scripture said, and the Scripture said, and the Scripture said. Well, let me tell you about what happened to me, and then they go back and say, and the Scripture said. See, now they're pointing their experience back to the Word of God. But most of us, we love, we love people's experiences. And God is not obligated to back an experience. Neither is he obligated to give you the same experience that someone else had. Come on, wake up, church. The word have I hid in mine heart. The word is a lamp unto our feet and the light unto our path. My daughter, you know, she called me. She wanted to talk to her dad before she was on her way to church. And, um, you know, we, I don't know how we got in that conversation. I said, but you know what? Uh, uh, folk don't like church no more. Most time you go in church, you won't, you may have one scripture, one or two scriptures. It's gonna be a motivating word. We're gonna throw Jesus in there a little bit, right? But but how how many how often you just go in life, just look at how often are you going somewhere and you're being sat down and taught the word? Amen. Prophets, they prophesying and, and I just feel, I just feel, I just feel. You gotta watch all that I just feel. Because if they, if they engage in CNN and, and, and all these other, yeah, it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to guide how they feel. It's the word of God. Okay, watch this. So let me, I want to talk about King Hezekiah. I got to move, man. I got a long ways to go. Hezekiah, in 2 Kings 20, we find the story of Hezekiah, King Hezekiah. The Bible says he was sick unto death, and a prophet came and told him, uh, Pastor Courtney, to get his house in order. He was going to die. You know the story. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall. He prayed unto the Lord, reminded the Lord of all that he had done for the Lord. And, and, and the prophet was right, out of the, right on the borders of the city, and the word of the Lord dropped back in him and said, go back and tell Hezekiah that he's going to live another 15 years. Say, I heard his prayer. I heard his petition, and I'm going to give him 15 more years of life. Right? right? Now watch this. Watch this. 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 7 is interesting, though, Sister Sherry, because we never, we, no one has never talked about this. And when I heard it for the first time, I had a revival. He gave him 15 years back, Rube, Rob, with instructions. Boy, y'all better pay some good attention. He gave him years back within, within, he gave him 15 years back with. So the 15 years was connected to the end. Come on, come on, everybody, even on live, I need you to talk back to me. The 15 years he gave to him of life was connected to instructions. It says there in 2 Kings 27, Isaiah said the same prophet go back and say you're going to get life, but you need to take a lump of figs. And they took it, and now we see why he was about to die. Laid it on the boil, and he, so the boil now had infected his body, and he was about to die. But it was the instructions 
It was the instrument. So God could have said, I'm going to give you your life back. Average Christians start praising the Lord and don't wait for the instructions. The instruction was, take a lump of figs, lay it on the boil, and he recovered. I got some nurses in here. And before they release that patient, they come in there with that sheet of paper, don't they? They say, all right now, um, uh, 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 Pastor Vincent, we about to let you go. Now, when you get home now, we don't want you to eat no fried food. And you need to eat a whole bunch of fruits and vegetables. You need to drink water. Take them sodas out your diet. And so they're trying to keep you out of the hospital by giving you instructions. So staying out of the hospital is connected to not your prayers. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 not your prayers because you prayed to get out. And getting out, God gave you from, from an apostle called a nurse. Because that's her or his apostolic office to operate in. And that kingdom is that of the medicinal realm. And they come back and tell you, they give you a prophetic word called instructions. But you say, I'm just going to pray about it. Anybody waking up? I say, anybody waking up? Watch this, watch this, watch this. Godly instructions. Have a question. Have a question. What has God said to you or a person concerning your living healed that you or the person has refused to obey? Uh, 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 I.e., refuse to implement, refuse to get rid of, refuse to change, refuse to start doing, refuse to remove from their diet, but did not, and they died instead of lived. What has God said to you? That you have, remember I said it's in the detail. I believe God, well, 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 well keep, keep going, Vincent. Here's a statement. If God has promised us long life, then God is obligated to tell us of those things that will prevent us, that will, I'm sorry, that will prevent, that will allow us, excuse me, to experience that long life. I want to go back up and read some else to you real quick. See, we don't know all the details of a person's walk of faith. We don't know the level of faith they were walking on or the level of faith they were using. Right? Uh, we, 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 we don't know the private conversations others had with the Lord. See, you may have been praying for them to live, and they may have told God, I'm ready. They put that smile on their face when you walk in there. They, they, you ask them how they doing, and they don't want you going home worrying. And they saying, baby, it's, I'm out, my, I'm, I'm, it's good. And they smiling while you're there. And in private conversation, they saying, Lord, I'm ready. I'm tired of this body. I'm ready for my glory. Some of them get to peek over into that eternal rest, and they see, they see them streets of gold, and they got to look back to the hospital of Tyler, and they say, I want to go. And they're not obligated to tell you their private conversations. With God. It's their body that they got to fight and keep and smile. And you don't know. See, you, I say this all the time. You get to go home and turn over on your bed and throw your leg over on your spouse, and they got to lay there in that bed in that one spot. Can't move, can't turn over, and if they do, they got to get somebody to come assist them. You don't know what conversations they're having with God. And you praying for them to be healed. And they was like, God, I've done all that I think I can do. But it's in the details because we don't listen. They find subtle ways, Rube, to sneak in there that I'm ready to go. And you start saying, nah, nah, don't talk like that. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 20. Will you put it up there for me, please? Mm, 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 mm. Help us, Holy Spirit. Help me with this message, Lord. Help me get it across. I got to fix this wire. It is not acting right. All right, there it is. Uh... Well, try 2 Corinthians. I'm sorry. 2 Corinthians 3 and 20. I want you to see something. Watch this. It's coming. Uh, that's 18. Okay. Open face, behold the glass of glory. That's it? It's just only 18 verses? Okay. So it, it was 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Uh, started, is it 20, 21, 22? It has more than. It's going to say all things are yours. Um. Go back to 1 Corinthians 3. I think that's where it's at. All things are yours 
uh, 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 minister, minister, minister Eric, pass on that Bible. You know, I need that. <clears throat> all right, all right. First Corinthians. I want you to see something real quick. Because I, I got, you know, man, sometimes these, these series, boy, they, they get lengthy. I'd be wanting you to get something. Okay. Uh, while we look now. Oh, that's, I went too far back. Okay. Uh, three. Did I say three? I did say three. Okay. So, oh, I'm in 2 Corinthians. No one, I would have never saw it there. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, let me get you to it, uh, 20, uh, uh, 22, 22, 1 Corinthians 3, 22, 1 Corinthians 3, 22, uh-huh, now watch this, look what it says, come on, read with me, Qu quickly, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world, uh -uh, or, uh-huh, or, 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 what about them? That's their life. That's not your life to control with your prayers. That's their life. That's their life. And if with their life they want what's present, your prayer can't take that away. I mean, what's future, your prayer can't take it away and give them your present still wanting to see them. Sometimes I have to wait to everybody leave the room and have them private conversation. Say, hey, talk to me for real. I get faith, but I need you to tell me where are you? And I've had many of them have this conversation when all their kids gone, Pastor, I'm ready. I'm ready, Pastor. And then I just have to pray peace for the family. Because I already know what they want me to go in there and pray with them. I already know what they want me to say. But I got, I got to line my faith up with that person that's right there. I got to get in agreement with that person that's right there. I'm trying to mature you. I'm trying to build your faith. I'm trying to grow you in the place because at one time in our life, all of us are going to be met with it. And I guarantee you, it'll be a whole lot easier. It'll be a whole lot easier. It'll be a whole lot peaceful if you just really walk in there and say, Mama, talk to me for real. What you want, Mama? Babe, Mama, keep it real. I can handle it. I'm all right. Trust me, Mama. You can tell me. Trust me, Daddy. You can. Friend, just tell me what it is. And they keep it real. You'd be like, now let me go and prepare my heart. For what I know is to come. God, I need peace because this ain't going to be easy. I'm not ready for this, but I heard them. And God, I'm just praying for peace for rest for them. Let them go and they sleep, Lord. Let it be such a peaceful and a graceful transition. And then, Lord, help my heart. I apply the blood to my mind. And I pray, God, for your peace to rest on my heart, God. And you prepared me for this. You told me you'll give me a peace that will surpass. See, now I'm, pray now I'm praying right because I'm, I'm helping myself out. We don't like this conversation here in church, man. It's hard when I have. I get it. I get it. But one day it's going to come and you're going to need this message. You're going to need this. You're going to need this. You're going to need this. Some words you just got to tuck away until you need it. You got to be like Mary. She didn't, she didn't discredit anything nobody said about Jesus. She was a smart woman. You know what the Bible says? She hid all these things in her heart. She just said, no, I don't believe that. Ain't no, no, no. She said, oh, you for real? He going to save his, okay, I'm just going to tuck that I see. We'll see. <laughs> a prophet, for, okay, all right, we'll see. So be like Mary, just take it and tuck it. Because one day you're going to need it, you'll be able to pull it out and be like, oop, this is just what pastor was talking about. Now listen, if God promised us long life, then God is obligated to tell us those things that will prevent us from losing our lives so that we might experience that long life. Now, here, here's the scripture. Listen to the scripture. Listen to the scripture. You know, now nah, I don't want to get into that. Exodus 23 and 25 says, And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. But listen, listen to the scripture. Listen to the scripture. Listen to the scripture. He said, I'm going to take sickness away, but the first thing he said was, I'm going to bless your water and your bread. So that means then that that may be a change of diet. That will keep the sickness away. Are you listening? That will cause you now to experience long life. Are you listening? Man, we went on that 21-day fast. I think I may have had a piece because she ordered something. And, 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 but, but been about three things I have not gone back to. And I'm talking about in the morning time, boy, I'm up like a rabbit. Like, whoa. I, I think I may have had three cups of coffee. Now, y'all know. Y'all know that's a miracle. 
That's a miracle. You and when it's real, you say it like that. That's a miracle. <laughs> I probably only had three cups of coffee. Don't even taste the same no more. I said, okay, Lord, I ain't going to force it. I ain't going to force it. Maybe you took the taste away for a reason. Because, I, you know, I, if, if I get, when I was getting thirsty during the day, it, it, it wasn't like I was running the water. I was getting thirsty saying, that's coffee calling. You know, just going to get me a cup of coffee. You know, they say, you need to drink some water. I say, it's water and coffee. <laughs> but see, I, you keep up with that habit. You never put water in your body to flush your body out. And have you ever seen a coffee machine that's never been clean? <laughs> Psalms 23 and 3 says, Listen, listen, listen to the healing that's in the scripture. We read these scriptures and we don't listen. He restoreth my soul. We make that so spiritual. Lord, restore. Only in the house of the Lord, Lord, restore. He could be restoring you right there in front of your refrigerator. No, I didn't say refrigerator. It's refrigerator. He said, he restored my soul. He leadeth me. Hear the healing. In the paths of of what's right for me. We were, babe, man, this was revival. I was studying this on the plane. Boy, I was getting so happy, man. I was crunching that seat. Boy, I was like, this is so good. Because I had never read that scripture like that. You know, you we read it. Uh, 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 the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me. And we'd be like, read. But are we knowing what he's telling us? Put some weight on it. My cup, that ain't weight, run it though. But are we listening? Are we knowing what he's saying to us? He's wanting us to experience long life, and the shepherd always leads the sheep in its right path of righteousness away from the lion, away from the danger. Satan roaming to and fro as a lion. He leadeth us away from stuff that will take our lives. First Corinthians 2 11 says, watch this, for what man knoweth the things of a man? Save the spirit. So God, way of speaking to us, look at me, it's not out here. God speaks to us in here. He speaks to us through his word and by his spirit. So the scripture just said, what no, save the spirit. So you need to be listening inside on what God's telling you. Because if you're only listening outside, that means that the thing is already manifested and it's possibly too late. Did you hear what I just said? If you're only listening, if, you, if your way of hearing God is out here, out here, just out here, well, that means that what was first in here that he possibly was trying to prevent has manifested and it's out here, it could be outgrown your faith. It could have already outgrown your faith. So God will speak in here while it's still little, while your faith can handle it. Before it gets out here and it's too big for your faith because it's too grown. Boy, I hope y'all listening, boy. I hope y'all listening. I hope y'all listening. Because me, why is this happening to me? Why is this going on right now? Was God speaking before it showed up? Was he saying something before it showed up? Psalms 91, 9 through 12, verse 16. Not only does he protect our home, that scripture is for protection of you. Because I was made, because you made the Lord, because you made the Lord instructions, because you made the Lord your refuge, even the most high, your habitation. So the Lord is not just something we come to on Sunday, it's something we dwell in continually. It's not something that we just say, oh, I got, I got to be lordy, lordy on Sunday. And then, you know, on Monday through Saturday, he's a habitation. The scripture says, watch this, because of that, read the scriptures and say, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge to keep thee in all of thy ways. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. We never heard this scripture like it was written. 
They shall bear thee up in their hands. That's safety. That's safety. That's safety, right? But that's safety as a result of God being the habitation, right? But he say, if you dash your foot against the stone, the angels can't bear you up and you're not safe. What is dashing my foot against the stone going against what God said when you know he said it? I got a friend of mine, uh, a pastor friend of mine, years ago. I went to preach for him. I was in his office, and we were all sitting there before service started. And, man, I heard this heavy breathing. I looked over there. I was him breathing. I'm talking about hard. And I, I say, hey, Bishop, man, what is going on with that? Oh, man, I went to my doctor, man. He said my high blood pressure, all several things he mentioned. He said, man, I'm supposed to stop and, and, and can fish, amazing fisher, you know, told me to stop eating this fried, uh, eating that fried fish, but I told the Lord, mm, the devil is a lie. I'm going to pray for it, and I'm going to still eat my fish. Two months later, he died. So the apostle called the doctor, said, the instruction said, watch this, watch this, listen, to bear him up, don't eat the fish fried. Didn't say don't eat fish. Just don't eat it fried. Because if you keep eating this fried fish, you're going to die. So the word of the Lord came giving him long life, but it was in an instruction. It wasn't in his prayers because the prayer didn't work. The prayer couldn't bind up you putting the fried fish in your body. The instruction was don't put it in your body. That was the answer to the prayer. Not to bless it, but answer to the prayer was to obey the instruction. And that's what we do all the time. God say, don't say that. God say, don't do that. Father, I thank you that you protect me. You keep watch over me. God say, no, 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 no. If you, dis, if you dash your foot against the stone, you don't, that's not doing what I say. I can't protect you. I can't protect you if you dash on your foot against the stone. My protection is in the instruction. Oh, you, you can take that like mayonnaise and wipe it over the whole sandwich of your life. I don't know why that come from, but you just put that over your whole life. It, don't, it could be with your money. It could be in your relationship. But right now, we're talking about being held. We're talking about the blurred line, but you can put it over everything. The Lord tell you, don't date him. Don't go out with him. Don't hang out with them. Don't spend money on that. Then you do it. Now, the bill not paid. Now, you wonder, God, you say that tithe and stuff. God say, but I told you not to spend the money. I told you not to date him. He was proving to you that surely if he not going to take care of you, he ain't going to take care of no baby. So we could have disregarded all this going downtown trying to get the man to get the man to do what's right. Because if he can't be a man by himself, another man trying to get him to be the man ain't going to make him a man. Y'all ain't listening, y'all ain't listening, y'all ain't listening, y'all ain't listening, they ain't listening, Lord. They ain't listening, Lord, they ain't listening. So what's the problem? What's the problem? Why? Oh, 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 that last verse in Psalms. Watch this. He said, they shall bear thee up with their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. The last verse says, with long life, I will satisfy you. woo And show him my salvation. I'm going to satisfy you with long life and show you how to get to the long life. Now, listen carefully. What's the problem? Why are we possibly missing hearing God in this area? Well, Hebrews chapter 5 it tells us why, verse 11 through 14 tells us why. It says, of whom have many things. He said, I got, Paul said, I got many things to say to you. He said, but they're hard to be uttered. Seeing, watch this. He said, the reason is you're dull of hearing. It ain't the word you came to church to hear today. Pastor, I got other stuff going on in my life. Why you, I need somebody to tell me how to, I got this other stuff going. He said, you're dull of hearing. You're not even listening. Because in a healing message, God has a way to even minister to your marriage in a healing message. He can, he can minister to your money in a healing message, but you got caught up in the title rather than getting caught up on hearing God. And since it ain't a shouting message and a message you can get up and tap my carpet up, well, your carpet up, our carpet up, you don't want to hear it because ain't no shouting behind it. got to turn to all these scriptures, you know what I'm saying? Why you got to look like that? Why you got to dress like that? Why they got to have lights and stuff like that? So you so caught up on everything else but hearing God. Why did you come to church? You came here with dull hearing and blaming the church because you ain't heard nothing. 
He said, you dull of hearing. He Look what he says. He says, for when the time ye ought to be teachers. All these years in church. All these years we've been going to church. I had some of my sons and daughters come up. They've been, I know them. I know them personally. They've been in church ever since they were little kids. And, and, their li- and the line of understanding in their lives was blurred in this area. And they've been coming to church ever since they were little kids. How so? The line should not be blurred. You should be able to stand up and teach this yourself. But dog people don't care what they hear. Now watch this. He goes on to say, time you ought to be teachers. Ye have need to one teach you again, which be the first principle of the oracles of God, and are become such as a need of milk and not a strong meat. You know, sometimes, sometimes I look around, you know, this is just me talking spiritually in, in the spirit realm. I see grown folks with bottles in their mouth. That's what the script, that, that's the picture Paul painting. He said, you are, you grown. You, you, you should be, when, when we should be able to look at you and see that you're mature, you walking around, you got, you got a bottle with a, with a rope on it around your neck. So every time you need something, you pull your bottle. Wow. Now he goes on to say, for everyone that uses milk, watch this, is unskillful in that word of righteousness that he said in Psalms 93 that he will protect you with. He said they're unskillful with it. I'll just pray and it'll be all right. I ain't going to worry about them instructions. For he is a babe. That's why I tell you, you never judge a person by their natural age. You could be 40 and a child in the spirit. And that's why most people rather lean on their experience because they got more time with it and it makes them feel older. I remember I was in my barbershop. This old guy was in there. He was talking that word. And, you know, my granddad taught me don't back down from nobody. He's he talking that word. And I say, no, sir. He's a big, big, well-known deacon in the church. I say, no, sir. The Bible don't say that. The scripture. And I'm a young kid, man. I'm, I'm talking about my pastor put so I, I used to be able to quote that word. I still can't a little bit. But back then, I could be able to spit them scriptures out. No, sir. That's not what the Bible said. The Bible says this. this, this. No, sir. That's not what the Bible said. The Bible said this, this. And he just got frustrated because I'm coming back with the word, but he's talking from his experience. And so he utters these words out of, out of his mouth. He gets up by my chair and turn around. He said, you would think that you would listen to someone that's older than you and been in the church longer than you. I said, no, sir. Job said, all old men aren't wise. <laughs> you going to throw nothing on me just because you old in age and you ain't coming. You're going to speak for God. If you're going to speak for God, speak for God and God gave you his word, not your experience. I'm going to mature y'all. If you stick with me, I promise you every time I get up here, I'm going to give it my best shot. I'm trying to hit a home run in your life every time. But it's not just enough for me to know it. You got to know it too. You got to be fully convinced. So that means you got to become a teacher to yourself. Because the only way you become fully convinced in the word is that you teach yourself. You'll hear what a lot of other people say, but you'll only believe what you say to yourself. Did you hear what I just said? God's word is true, but you won't believe it until you say it to yourself. I got to get up out of here. Man, my God from heaven, this is so good. Okay, I'm going to take a few more minutes and I'm out of here. Okay, so here it is, here it is, here it is. The, oh, so he said, where am I at? Where am I at? I'm at verse 14, Hebrews 5, 14. Look what it says. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, even those who by reason, listen, here it is, who by reason of use, have their senses. Now, okay, so now he's talking about looking out here, looking out here, okay? Come on, say, it is safe to look out here. But, but watch this, watch this. Look, go, got to follow the instructions, Pastor Courtney. He says, only if your senses have been exercised to discern the good and the evil. He said, if your senses have not been exercised to discern the good and the evil, looking out here could be real dangerous. And he said, if you know you want milk, don't be looking out here. He said, because your senses have been exercised to discern the good and evil. So what looks good could be evil. I'm sorry. What looks evil could be good. Because your senses have been not, your senses have yet to be exercised to discern good and evil. Come on now. Okay, okay. I see y'all looking like that. Like, give me an example. No problem. Fire looks attractive to a baby. All they see 
is beautiful flames coming out of that burner. Their exercise, their senses, they obey. They still on milk, so they can't discern. That's why they need a parent in their lives who will lead and guide them. They need a parent, a.k.a. Holy Spirit, because they're not mature enough yet, who will lead them away from that because their senses have not been exercised in that area yet. You tell them not to touch it, but because that evil looks so good. When you walk away, because they are a child and still on milk, they're going to go touch it for themselves and suffer what they did not have to because the instructions came and said, don't touch it. Pastor, stand up before you every Sunday and say, hey, don't touch that aisle over there. That aisle is hot. Not only do I have the experience, I got the word also. Well, I'm going to touch it anyway. I'm going to let him touch it. I'm going to let her. I'm going to touch her. You know, I'm going to touch it. I'm going to do, you know, and then you come back and you're hot. You got that little burn right there. <laughs> you got Here's some side notes, and I'm, I'm at the close with these side notes. I can get it in. When we know that we have a family history of certain eating habits or challenges of sickness, we cannot just pray and continue in the same habits that contributed to the sickness in the family. Will y'all please listen to me and lean in strong right here? That's just a general. That's not a generational curse. It's not a generational curse. Listen carefully. <laughs> Here's another side note. We do not know what God told a person to stop doing, and they did not listen. Our bodies are the temple of Holy Spirit, and we can't defile the temple and expect the temple to give back to us long life. Here's an important point. <laughs> Sometimes people are born with deformities. Mm-hmm. The body of man is under the fall of sin. So they'll be born with heart murmurs. Sometimes women will, will be born, and, 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 and I'm just paraphrasing it because they're loose, which means they don't, they're unable to hold child or, you know, those type of things like that. Sometimes people are born with no leg, no arm. The, that is not the will of God. The body, just like us, we're born in sin, shapen in iniquity. You got it? Which in context, he's really saying that I am, I am actually my daddy's side chick child. Shaping in iniquity. You know, he was the one that they kept out there in the yard. Brother didn't like him because his daddy stepped out and had another boy named David. Okay. With that. We're born our body, so sometimes you may have a heart murmur. Sometimes, you know, people, people may not be born with an eye, D different things like that. We're born with deformities. Now, listen carefully, listen carefully, listen carefully, listen carefully. People may have missing parts, deficiency of something in the body. The person uh, may get healed. They can either get healed spiritually, laying of hands, prayer, God heal them, or you can get healed medicinally. I, have, I don't think we should disregard medicine. I believe that there are apostles. You heard me use that, that word earlier. I wasn't using it lightly. I believe that there are people, Christians, that God has called to that kingdom of, of medicine, and they are what I would call apostles of healing. That's, that's what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to talk back to the church on what things we should use and what things we shouldn't use. Now, sadly, some of them get in there, they get caught up in the money, they get bought out, and they just, you know, go with all the medication. But there are some ones that should be able to look over our body and tell us, what we should be able to naturally and if medicinally is safe put in our bodies to help those areas of deformities but here's the other irony some somebody may not get prayed and the arm may not grow back somebody may get prayed for and it may not manifest in the hole in the heart being healed are you listening to me now listen to this carefully they should not though assume that it is something that God put on them you should not assume that it's something that God put on you. So here, here's what you got to do. Here's your instruction. Claim healing, but also seek the Lord on what is his will of healing for you. Listen carefully, because you may have to live with it, but it does not mean that you are not healed of it. All healing does not mean that it is not there, but that you have the grace to endure it. One of, the, one of the most profound speakers in the church is a young man, that, a young guy that has to come out and they have to put him up on top of a podium because he has no legs or no arms. 
but he's a profound speaker in, 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 this, in the church world with no legs and no arms. He could sit around and wait for a miracle and just wake up one day and hope those arms grow out and those legs come back. Or he can accept the fact that I am healed because I still have purpose, I still have identity, I still have a destiny that God wants me to fulfill, and I'm not going to let what happened to my body keep me back from pursuing what God called me to. He can, he can lay in Lola Bar and stay in slumber and I don't have no arms, I don't have no legs. Uh, or he can say, you know what, Lord, if this is how it's going to be, I accept it, but I'm going to walk this healing out in my purpose. And if the arm comes back, if the legs come back, but I still, it, it didn't, don't stop me from having purpose. Are you listening to me? Now, f- for females, for young ladies, listen to me carefully. You, 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 the, the, the miscarriages. There's a scripture that says in Deuteronomy that there will be no infant of days. Uh, Romans chapter 4, when the Bible says, even God who quickened the dead and called those things that be not as though they were, in context, Abraham couldn't have, could, could, could not produce, neither could Sarah, and by faith they call those things that be not as though they were. That's what that scripture really meant. He spoke life back to his loins. So you got to find the instructions in the word of God and parent the instructions with your, with your situation, and then you'll see the healing manifestation of God. Does that make sense? Okay. Here, I'm done. Jesus. I got I to gotta stop. Jesus Christ, I dealt with all the human stuff. That we don't, we don't base God's word on human experience. So some people never see healing because they, and here's another reason why some people never see healing, because they keep blaming God. God, you took my mama. God, you took my daddy. Because they heard some preacher say, the Lord giveth. He, he decided in a church service to repeat Job. But you know what? I tell you, you got to let Job's confession be Job's confession. Job didn't know nothing about the devil. He wasn't there at that meeting when Satan and all them sons of God came and met with God. So the only thing he knew was God. Amen. <laughs> Let's deal with Jesus Christ. I'm done. I got to get this to you. I, I know I'm over my time, but amen. I'm pastoring today, so you're just going to deal with it. <laughs> Hebrews 12 and 2 says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, right? And so here's the point right here. Jesus Christ is the representative of God's will for Christians, not human experience or human leaders. Now, listen to me carefully. Years ago, I was having bad headaches. Y'all have heard this story before, but this is a good place for a stick up. I was having excruciating headaches. Well, I had to go to the hospital. One particular time I remember, I think it was the last time my Pastor M had to take me because I couldn't drive. I couldn't, I couldn't see. It was bad. She took me to the hospital. I was seeing like, you know, that, that little fuzzy look in your face, like when, a, when the TV station go out, I couldn't see nothing. And they ran all my vital signs and didn't find anything. So I think the people, I thought, I, I came to the assumption that the people thought I was there for drugs because it wasn't showing up on my vital signs. But I later found out in my prayer time that it was pork. And I heard Holy Spirit say, eat no more pork. And so from that day forward, matter of fact, I think, <laughs> I think one of my, my children, it wasn't until... <laughs> it wasn't until they became teenagers and, and went over a certain person's house that they had a fried pork chop for the first time. I ain't calling that no names. And my daughter was talking about how good it was, like I ain't never had one of those in my life. Well, you know, when God told me to cut it out of my diet, I didn't know how it would sit with my children. They come out of me, so I'm, we cutting it out the house. We just ain't none of us going to eat none. You get what I'm saying? And, and, and so, uh, and hadn't had a headache or anything since then. Now, if pastor was preaching, that was over, how long ago was that, baby? Help me, I want to I finish it. How long ago was that, probably, what you say? Few, more than a few years. We was on Jared, when we on, we went on Jared Road, where we at? About five or six years ago? Nah, it was longer than that. <laughs> it was longer than that. Because cause I'm seeing it. I'm seeing me being balled up in the bed, and you took me, and it looked like we were on Jared Road. We were at Newcastle. Okay, we was at Newcastle, so that's two, four, about six. No, nah, that got to be. No, nah, I've been saying that way. I've been saying that since we've been in the gym, so I know that was before. That, well, don't worry about it. It was a while back, <laughs> while back ago. 
We let's leave, just let's leave it right there. It was a while back ago. Let's just leave it right there because I, I don't want us to be going back and forth up here. No. <laughs> Y'all just saw your mom and dad kind of, you know, that's all right. Anyway, when the Lord told me to cut it out, I cut it out. Now, for, fast forward 30, 40 years from now, I had not listened to them instructions. Pastor, powerful man of God, man. He knew all that scripture up on the inside of him. How he just dropped dead like that. Cast devils out, great work, all that propping and stuff they built, Lord. How you just take him out like that, Lord? How you just let him go like that? And, and, and if the Lord could, I'm, I'm going to be the Lord for a minute, and that's, that would be you, hopefully. You know, I wish I could come back and see how many of y'all would cry a little bit over your boy. But this just teaching purposes only. You get what I'm saying? I pass on, and now you almost don't want to believe God no more. I can't believe Pastor gone, and, you know, da-da, great works. God still had more for him. He did. But what if God was to tiptoe in your prayer closet like this? I know I don't come in here much. <laughs> That's just a little joke joke. That's just a little joke joke. Just a little joke joke. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just a little joke joke. But I wanted to come in here this time to tell you that 20 years ago, I told him to stop eating pork and he didn't. But he ain't obligated to tiptoe into your prayer time to tell you what he told me. If he wanted you to know, he would have had you there when he told me. So all of us could have heard at the same time. And this is exactly what's happening to people. And it's not just happening with food. He telling some of us, stop being so messy. I really got to go now. He's telling some of us, you know what? No, I got to go because of the time. I got to go because of the time. He's telling some of us, stop gossiping. Stop talking about folk. See, you don't even realize the cancer that's attached to some stuff that we're doing. He telling some dudes, man, stop hanging around with them dudes, man. They changing the way you see your marriage, man. Changing the way you see your marriage. He said, you're going to go work at that ship, y'all. You're going to go out there on that ship, man. And it's a whole other religion out there, man. And you got to, you got to crack your Bible. You got to stay away from because before you know it, man, you're going to be cheap. He's going to say, hey, 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 you married now. You got to stop hanging around all your single friends. You got to let that go. You turn that page. You ain't mad. You, no, 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 no. And, and you ain't even witnessing to them. You, you out there having mimosas with them and still laughing and still you hearing them talking about this guy and this guy sleeping with this guy and, this, and you and your husband don't have time. And now you feel like you need another one in a minute. Now, matter of fact, he'll be here in a minute. See, you falling, and it's because, see, and I'm trying to tell you to stay away from this stuff. Your, your diet is wrong. Your di see, we think diet is just eating. Diet ain't just eating. Diet is what you're reading. It's what you're seeing. It's what you're saying. And our diets are off. And we want to live long, and our diets are off. And we want to live long, and our diets are off. And we're blaming God because we're dying, but our diets are off. You ain't going to never hear me talk about a pastor. I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to be talking about folks. I ain't going to do it. It ain't just what, it just, it just ain't the food that you put, it ain't those five, those four different food groups you put on your plate. <laughs> we don't sell the issues, we don't forgive. Jesus said, forgive quickly. Destroy that. Don't let it get in your heart. Don't let it be in your root. Destroy it. Forgiveness destroys it. And then we can work on healing you, but destroy it. Forgive it. No, I'm not going to let them go. Well, you're not letting them go. You're not letting you go. You're not resisting the devil. You got an open door for the devil to come in. And now you're sick. Lord, how you do this to me? They did me wrong. Why they ain't? Because God say. I told you, vengeance is mine. I told you the vengeance is mine. I'll get them back by blessing you. But I needed you to forgive them, and you wouldn't. So unforgiveness is like you drinking the poison, hoping they die. And we got to get this right. We got to get this part right right here, guys. The conclusion is never base God's will for your life on humans. You base God's will for your life on Jesus. 
Mark chapter 17, I'm done. Mark chapter 17, so much more I could give you on that message, but I got to stop at that. Mark chapter 17, that boy, that man brought his son to Jesus. Keep paying favor. I'm, I'm closing out for real. That man brought his son to the disciples. And the Bible says the disciples could not heal him. The Bible says, then the man takes his son and brings him to Jesus. And the man says this, Philip. He says, I brought my son to your disciples and they did not heal him. Look what Jesus does. Look what Jesus does. Jesus turns and starts talking to the disciples and he says this. because He says, you perverse, you faithless and perverse generation. How long shall I be with you? Bring him to me. We're talking about human experience and Jesus. They brought him, he brought him to the disciples and they couldn't. Jesus said, bring him to me. Brought the boy to Jesus and he got healed. But brought him to the disciples and they could not. Whose report are you going to believe? Because when he came to Jesus, he got healed. But when he brought him to the human, he didn't. But whose report will you believe? Because the human experience, are you saying that Jesus can't do it? Because when he came to Jesus, Jesus healed him. Are you listening? So we never base God off of human experience. The scripture says, and ye shall know the truth. And the truth. So a person, I'm closing, you better hear this statement. Lean in right here. Here's my last statement. A person getting healed doesn't validate the word. Person, oh, that word must work. They got healed. No, 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 no. A person getting healed doesn't validate the word. The truth was there before they needed healing. Did you hear what I just said? The truth was there. The Bible says, and you shall know the truth and the truth. So the truth was there. It's you knowing it that makes you free. Not it making you free that validates it. So the truth is there all the time. So because you don't get the truth or you don't see the truth, don't mean the truth is not there or the truth don't work. Because the truth was there before you. You say, Pastor, how you get all this? I learned a long time ago in my private, in my closet with God when I first started this church. Because my, my, my transition to pastoring, it wasn't for Pastor Em and I. It wasn't smooth. And I started looking for a man, looking for a man, looking for a man, looking for a man. I knew the order of God that I need a pastor in my life, looking for a man. And one night in prayer, I heard Holy Spirit say, what are you doing? I say, I know the order. I say, I need a covering. He said, I'm your covering. Have you ever thought that because this happened, you can get closer with me and know me? He said, aren't you about to lead people? I said, yes, sir. He said, well, then don't you think you need to know me so you can lead them right? And from that night, I stopped leading people. I stopped looking for a man, and I pulled closer in the Holy Spirit. You asked me, I asked you the question, what did I do? Let me tell you what I did. I did not ignore the order, but I made sure that I had the right order. God first. God first. It's not Pastor Vincent first. It's not Pastor Vincent first. It's God first. Some of you got other people's experiences first. You got grandmama first. You got mama first. Some of you husbands have deceived your wife into thinking that you come before God. No, 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 no. You are her domestic head. You are not her spiritual head. God is the only spiritual head. So you actually got her under witchcraft. So I learned how to push all people out the way and make God first. That's why I've never had a problem with the word. How you know what the word says? I say because I never, I always go to God first before I go to man. And if I ever hear man say something, I go to God and ask God, is what he said right? So I ain't never mad at a man because I went to God to check what the man said. And if God didn't say it, I know how to spit out the fat. But many of us, we like eating, we like a whole lot of fat, a little bit of meat. 
I want to bring you up to a meat eating church. I want you to know the lines of demarcation. And I know I took some extra time today, but I intentionally did it. I believe this word is so vitally important for the body of Christ. Because there's one thing that we're all going to see and face one day, and that is the death of someone. And if you hang your faith on God took them, God knew what he was doing, the Lord give and the Lord take away, the lines are blurred. And God doesn't want us living with blurred lines. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your people. Thank you for this word. And I pray, God, that you just continue to grow us up in you. And although I'm doing my best to teach your people, God, I pray that there will be a vigor on the inside of them to go and study out this word, to know it for themselves, so that they may know the truth and the truth will make them free. Thank you for it. We give you the praise. Bring healing to this body. Bring revival in the hearts and in the minds of your people so that we're no longer the same, so that right way and, and the members of right way, the partners of right way, that we could be a beacon to our city so that we can shine the light of Christ that others may see and know and bring glory to you. It is in Jesus Christ we pray. All of God's people said amen. If you're here, you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I'm telling you, man, this healing power that we're talking about, it's available to you. It's even more available to you as a son or a daughter of God. And if you're here and you don't remember a time of ever confessing Christ as your Lord and Savior, listen, the danger of partaking in all of his gifts and his benefits and him not being the Savior of your life and you miss eternity is something that you don't want to do. The Bible declares that if we're outside of Christ, that if we're faithful and just to ask for forgiveness, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all of unrighteousness. And I'd like to give you that opportunity today to make Christ, to receive him as your Savior and to make him the Lord of your life. If today you'd like to make that decision all over this building, even those of you that are watching me on live stream, will you make this confession with me? Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you asking forgiveness of my sins. And on today, I receive you as my Savior, and I make you the Lord of my life. I give you the throne of my heart. I renounce my old way of living, and I follow after you. Thank you for bringing me into the family of God. I give you my life in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, congratulations. Welcome to the body of Christ. The Bible declares that upon that confession, you are now born again. And I'd like for you to do me a favor. We want to partner with you here at Rightway Christian Center. We want to know what just transpired in your life. So will you please go to rightwaycc.org forward slash next steps right there on your screen right way ccc.org forward slash next steps if you're in the sanctuary I want to ask you to go to that same platform there's an information some information we like to gather from you and there's also some teaching tutorials there that we want to walk alongside of you in this new life that you've now become a part of and if you're not a member of a church find a good church that you can uh, watch on live stream keep coming the right way keep watching us uh, only join if you hear the Lord uh, tugging on your heart to become a part of this amazing family here and we want to say congratulations to you in your new walk with Christ Jesus. Can we give those persons a hand clap of praise on today? Amen.